Hey guys, this is GKCS. We are talking about a question from the recent September challenge of Code Chef, which is uh, filling the matrix. So what you have with you is a matrix B, and this is constructed using an array A. Right, so values of B are given by B of i comma j is actually A of i minus A of j. The absolute difference. So there are guarantees that for the Q values of B, B, I, J given to you, all of them have to be either 0 or 1. Alright, so what you then have is that if B of I, J is 1, then A of I is not equal to A of J because there's a difference. There's a difference between the absolute difference. Uh, but if it is 0, then you can say that A of I is actually equal to a of j. Okay, so this is the kind of information you have. What can you say apart from this? If a of i, or rather let's say b of i j is 0, then this condition satisfies a of i is equal to a, b of j, a of j rather. Uh, then you have b of j k equal to 0. So what we now have is a of i equal to a of j equal to a of k. What happens if you get something like this? You have b of k i equal to 1. If this happens, this matrix, this matrix b is illegal, it cannot be formed and therefore you are supposed to print at this point, no, this matrix cannot be formed. And if you find no such condition, then you are supposed to print yes. So your end goal, basically your, your target is to find all constraints in the information given to you and say if you can create this matrix or rather if this array A can exist. Okay, there are no guarantees about the values that A contains, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what values A contains. It's just that do these constraints satisfy? Okay, so let's try to find an algorithm to find out if, if this array can exist. So let's understand this problem a little deeper. You have a of i minus a of j, absolute difference being given by b of i j. Okay, so if this is equal to zero, it means that a of i is equal to a of j. On the other hand, if you have b of j comma l, equal to 1. It means that a of j is not equal to a of k. What this also implies is that a of i is not equal to a of k. It can't be possible, right, because they are equal and these two are not equal. Another thing that can happen is if you have b of j or let's say b of k and l equal to 0. This means that these two elements, a of k and a of l, are the same. And let's take another constraint for clarification. Um, you have m and k as 0, then a of k is equal to a of m, which means that this is equal to a of m. Alright. So, the kind of constraints you're getting with 0, the type 0 query, are equality. So all these elements can be grouped together. So all these elements can be grouped together because they have the same value. So we put k, l and m in one group. Similarly we can put i and j in another group and if you find more elements you can add them to this group. So these two groups are separate because they are not equal. In fact we cannot actually say whether they are separate or not Till you don't know this condition. So for now what we are doing is we are just grouping elements based on the type 0 queries and keeping type 1 queries for later. So what we are seeing is that i and j have the same values and k, l, m have the same values. But if j is not equal to k, that implies that i is not equal to k and i is not equal to l or i is not equal to m either. So if one of them is not equal to the other, it implies that none of these elements are equal to none of the elements here. Alright, so that is the constraint that will be implied if you have a type 1 query between them.
The second thing you can say is that if you have i, j and m in one set and k, l and m in other set, this is impossible because when you are grouping together type 0 queries, m and m would come together and you would condense this set to a single one with just one instance of m. So what's happening is that you have a set of sets but all of them have different elements. So therefore we have disjoint sets given to us. Okay, and when I say disjoint sets, you can think about the disjoint set data structure, which is probably going to represent, uh, which is going to help us actually find the solution here. So, when the type one queries come in, the most obvious way that you can say whether this solution is possible or not, is if you see B of K, M equal to one. So K and M exist in the same set. Using this set, you can find which set uh, element belongs to efficiently. Uh, and if K and M belong to the same set, you immediately say there's no possibility that this matrix can be formed. Otherwise, it's fine. Let's move forward. So let's say we have grouped these sets together, the ones, the elements which are equal, and we have these four sets with us now. Okay, that is joint. Uh, there are two ways to solve this problem. One is two coloring graph, which is order n and pretty cool you can have a look at that what we are going to be using is the disjoint set coloring so to speak uh, every element in the graph will every element in the set rather will be represented by one element in that set it could be itself also of course and the root element the representative of that set is going to contain something called color the colors can take just two colors in this scenario which is white or black Now, let's say we are trying to satisfy some constraints over here. What are the possible ones? This set is not equal to this set, which means that this set is either white or black, and this set is either black or white, respectively. So let's assume that we assign white over here and black over here. Okay, so the next constraint is the set containing A is not equal to the set containing P. At this point, there's just one color you can assign to this set, which is white. Because black is being assigned to A and therefore they have to be unequal. So till this point, we can assume that we have something like A of J, so B of J and C is equal to one. That is the first constraint here. The second constraint could be something like B of Q, D is one. So you have two constraints now. And let's say that the third constraint is B of S and L is one. Is this possible? Let's try. We have white in this set and we are trying to color this set which is already white. Now they have to have different colors, but we have run out of colors and they are both the same. Had this been black, it would have been fine. But they are both white, they have to be unequal. You can immediately say that this, these constraints cannot be satisfied and therefore there is no way that this matrix can be formed if this happens. So let's say we don't need this and we have something like the last set and the first set cannot be equal. So that will be B of Y comma K let's say is equal to one. So uh, you have a constraint here too that they cannot be equal. So because this is colored white, you have to color the set black. So we have four scenarios with us at this point. The first set and the second set can be the colored, uncolored, colored, colored, uncolored, colored, and uncolored and uncolored. Right? These are the four scenarios we have. And the answers here then is if both of them are uncolored, you can assign anything to the first and second set. Okay, you can assign the first set black and the second one has to be white, of course. So that scenario is taken care of. Uh, if one of them is colored, so if the second one is colored and the first one is not colored, or the first one is colored, the second one is not colored, then you have to assign a color to the, to the uncolored set such that this constraint is satisfied. I mean, that's obvious. Black, if one of them is black and the other one is uncolored, it has to be white and vice versa. So those two scenarios are taken care of. If both of them are colored, 
and if both of them have different colors that's fine you don't need to do anything if they are of the same color you immediately output no saying that this matrix cannot be formed so all four scenarios are taken care of at this point except for one thing what happens do we ever regret coloring this set white and coloring this set black therefore so could it have been that we could have colored the set black and this set white and then satisfy the constraints and not the other way around is that even possible no because if this set was black this set would be colored white and then this set would be colored black and what you're seeing is that all the colors are being inverted it's a mirror image but it doesn't really matter because the entire graph would be colored in the right way i mean it, it would still satisfy the the set of constraints that we have and therefore this is the disjoint set solution that we have with us uh, the complexity of this is for every element you're grouping elements together which is actually adding to a set which is about constant time in fact it's inverse ackerman but yeah ignore that it's constant time the other thing that you're doing is comparing the element uh, in one set to another set so that is finding the element in a set which is again constant time so it's pretty fast for n elements this is order n just like the two coloring graph problem so of course this is after you have path compression if you don't have path compression then it's going to be order n and uh, your solution won't pass the time limit but yeah so make sure you have path compression and also all sorts of efficiencies that you can have uh, if you have any doubts or suggestions for this problem then please leave them in the comments below uh, i'll be sharing the code and relevant links in the description uh, neer is one of the guys who actually helped me out a lot over here uh, in this problem and so probably i'll get his code somehow uh, thanks and i'll see you next time